It's now time to study non-right triangles. Right triangles are easy to solve. We use right triangle trigonometry. But what happens when the triangles we're trying to solve are not right triangles? Well, there are some things we can do to find missing sides and missing angles of non-right triangles. If you're given at least one side and the angle opposite it in a triangle, you can use something called the law of sines. The way the law of sines works for angle ABC and sides ABC, the sine of angle A divided by side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by side B is equal to the sine of angle C over side C. Just a nice little proportion system. Now, what we would do is we would we would need to know one angle and its opposite side. So you either need to know angle A and side A, or you need to know angle B and side B, or you need to know angle C and side C. Otherwise, you can't use the law of sine to find a missing side or a missing angle. A satellite orbiting the Earth passes directly overhead at observation stations in Phoenix and Los Angeles, 340 miles apart. At an instant when the satellite is between these two stations, its angle of elevation is simultaneously observed to be 60 degrees at Phoenix and 75 degrees at Los Angeles. How far apart is this, or how far is the satellite from Los Angeles? Uh, first of all, sorry about the incorrect grammar. That's because the iPad does spell check, and I don't always go back to check and make sure that it is not doing things like abbreviating words it shouldn't. Let's draw a picture here. Here's the satellite. I don't know, it looks like an oval with a, with a line through it. Here are my two observation stations. Here's Los Angeles, and here's Phoenix. They are 340 miles apart. Um, the angle of elevation at Phoenix is 60 degrees. The angle of elevation at Los Angeles is 75 degrees. We want to find out how far the satellite is from Los Angeles. Well, once we draw the triangle, the first thing that I want you to notice is that we know two of the three angles inside the triangle. Well, if we know two of the three angles, we can find the third one by subtracting the other two from 180. So the angle by the satellite must be 180 minus 75 minus 60, which is 45 degrees. The reason I need to find that is because you can't use the law of sines unless you know an angle and the side opposite. So now I know 45 degrees and the side opposite is 340. So the sine of 45 degrees over 340 is equal to the sine of, we're going to use 60 degrees because we want to know what x is. And the nice thing about the law of sines is we just do cross multiply. Well, when you cross multiply and solve for x, you should get 340 times the sine of 60 degrees and then divide it by the sine of 45 degrees. And we'll find out that the length from the satellite to Los Angeles is approximately 416 miles. Solve the triangle. Okay, whenever we are asking you to solve a triangle, I want you to make yourself a little chart. And the little chart's going to look like this. The three angles, which are always the capital letters we use for the vertices, go in one column, and the sides go in the next column. We always use lowercase letters. I want you to start by filling out the givens. Like angle A is 20 degrees and angle C is 25 degrees. And the only other side that I know is C, which is 80.4. Now we have to determine what we're going to find first. Well, anytime you're given two of the three angles in a triangle, you're going to find the third one. So angle B is 180 minus 20 minus 25. So it must be 135 degrees. Now that we know angle B, now we can find side B using the law of sines. So the sine 
of 25 degrees over 80.4 is going to equal the sine of 135 degrees over B. We're going to cross multiply and side B is going to be 80.4 times the sine of 135 and then we're going to divide that by the sine of 25 degrees. And we're going to find out that B is approximately 134.5. Now, because this is not a right triangle, I can't use the Pythagorean theorem. So to find the last missing side, we're actually going to have to do the law of sines again. I'm going to start with the same fraction of given information to get the most exact answer we can. When you're using the law of sines, if you're given an angle and a side, always use that angle and side for your proportion. And this time I'm going to set it equal to the sine of 20 over A. We're going to cross multiply and A is going to be 80.4 times the sine of 20 degrees divided by the sine of 25 degrees. I'm going to shove that in my calculator and I'm going to, I know it's not looking very nice there, is it? And I'm going to find out that A is approximately 65.1. And now I've solved my triangle. When we use the law of sines to find a missing angle, we're going to be taking an inverse sine of a measurement to find that missing angle. Well, first of all, angles are always positive. And I want you to recall that in the coordinate plane, where all students take calculus, signs are positive in both the first and second quadrant. But we found out in the section where we talked about inverse trig functions that when you do an inverse trig function, even though there may be two angles that give you a certain measurement, the graphing calculator is only going to give you one answer, known as the principal value. So it could happen when you're using the law of sines to solve a triangle and you have to start by finding a missing angle, that you could get one solution for the triangle, given an angle in two sides. You could have a triangle that has two different solutions given an angle and two sides, or we could give you two sides and an angle and they don't make a triangle at all. This is known as the ambiguous case of the law of sines. It's ambiguous because we don't know how many solutions there are without testing it out. So let's do a case where there is only going to be one solution to the law of sines. We're going to solve triangle ABC where angle A is 45 degrees, side A is 7, uh, square root of 2, and side B is 7. So we're going to start by making our little chart. But because we now know that when you take an inverse sine, there's the possibility of a second solution, I'm going to set up a second chart. We may use it, we may not use it, but I want you to set it up irregardless. And I want you to start by putting in the givens. The givens will be the same in both solutions, if there should be two solutions. Now given the information, the first thing I must find is angle B. So let's set up the law of sines to find angle B. So the sine of 45 degrees over 7 square root of 2 is going to equal the sine of angle B over 7. Now when you cross multiply, you get the sine of B is equal to 7 sine of 45 degrees over 7 square root of 2. We're going to get an answer. It's going to be decimal. And then you're going to take the inverse sine. You're going to find out that angle B is approximately, or not approximately, but exactly, 30 degrees. Okay, so we're going to put 30 degrees here. But here's the thing. 30 degrees isn't the only angle that the inverse sine of 0.5 is going to give you. There's an angle in the second quadrant whose reference angle is exactly the same and is also going to give you 
one half when you take its sine. Well, if the reference angles are the same, if the angle here is 30, then the reference angle here is 30. So what does the other angle have to be? Well, it must be 150 degrees. Now, this is how you're going to know if the second solution exists or not. Look at these two angles. They add up to 195, except we know that triangles can only add up to 180 degrees when you add the three angles. So if the given angle and the other angle you can get when you take the inverse sine add up to be more than 180, a second solution cannot exist. So that's why we know there must be one solution to this particular case. Okay, so let's finish finding that one solution. Angle A was 45, we found out B was 30, so angle C must be 105 degrees. And now if I know angle C is 105 degrees, now I can go use the law of sines again, the sine of 45 degrees over 7 squared of 2, but this time I'm going to set it equal to the sine of 105 degrees over C. And we're going to cross multiply and find out that C is approximately 13.5. So there was only one solution to this case. Now let's talk about how you would know if there were two solutions when you solve a triangle using the law of sine. Let's solve triangle ABC if angle A is 43.1 degrees, side A is 186.2, and side B is 248.6. First of all, I want you to start by setting up your charts. And remember I said always set up two because there's the possibility that there could be two solutions, even though you already know from the title of this problem that there are. And put the givens in. So angle A is 43.1 degrees for both problems. Side A is 186.2 for both problems. And side B is 248.2 for both problems. So we're always going to find angle B first. So the sine of 43.1 degrees over 186.2 is going to equal the sine of angle B over 248.2. So you're going to cross multiply and you're going to find out that angle B is 65.8 degrees. Well that's what it is for the first case. Now remember, in my all students take calculus Signs are positive in both the first and second quadrant. So if there is a sign that gives me an angle of 65.8 degrees, which is in the first quadrant, there must be a second quadrant angle whose reference angle is the same. How do I find that angle? 180 degrees minus 65.8, which is 114.2 degrees. Does this second solution exist? Well, do the two angles in the second solution add up to be more than 180 degrees? No, they don't. That means there must be two solutions to this problem. Let's finish solving problem one, and then we'll finish solving problem two. In solution one, I know angles A and angle B, so now I find angle C by subtracting the two angles from 180, and I find out it's 71.1 degrees. Then I need to find side C by doing the sine of 43.1 degrees over 186.2 is equal to the sine of 71.1 degrees over C. I cross multiply, and I find out that C is approximately 257.8. Now let's go back to solution two. Angle A was 43.1. We found that angle B was 114.2. So angle C must be 22.7 so that they add up to 180. Now that I know angle C, to find side C, I'm going to do the sine of 43.1 over 186.2 is equal to the sine of 22.7 over side C. I'm going to cross multiply and I'm going to find out that side C is 105.2. So there's also the case 
where we could get no solution. The nice thing about no solution is you're going to find out right away there's no solution. So I want to solve triangle ABC where angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 70, and side B is 122. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to try to find angle B. So the sine of 42 degrees over 70 is going to equal the sine of angle B over 122. I cross multiply. I go to take the inverse sine of B, but I can't. It gives me an error message. The reason is because I'm trying to take the inverse sine of 1.17. We learned in the inverse trig function section that the rain, or sorry, the uh, inputs for inverse signs had to be between 1 and negative 1. If the numbers were bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1, we couldn't take their inverse sign. So in this case, there is no triangle that fits this description, and therefore you just write no solution.